pressures over oxidation reduction reactions. So in the previous lecture, we covered oxidation numbers, which you have to know oxidation numbers before you do oxidation reduction reactions. So, <clears throat> so if we take an example of an oxidation reduction reaction, so iron solid plus CuSO4 to make um, copper solid plus FeSO4. Okay, so this is an oxidation reduction reaction. In order to understand this reaction, first thing that you have to do is assign oxidation numbers. So if we assign oxidation numbers to all of the elements, so iron in its elemental state, pure state, so it's zero, and pure copper, so pure copper solid would be zero. And then for CuSO4, <clears throat> so again, you have to know that SO4 is a polyatomic ion, and if you know its charge is negative two, then you can figure out the charge, so the oxidation numbers of everything else. So oxygen is negative two, that's eight negatives, right? Whatever sulfur is, sulfur plus eight negatives has to sum to negative two, so sulfur must be plus six. So sulfur is plus six, oxygen is negative two. And so now copper has to balance all of that to zero. So since sulfur is plus six, oxygen is negative two, that's eight negatives and six positives has to equal zero, so copper must be plus two. <clears throat> right, but again, based on what we covered in chapter two, you could have already known this because the name of that is copper two sulfate. Right, that's what four two minus the sulfate. The Roman numeral is the oxidation number of the transition metal. And then on the right, so iron sulfate, so sulfur is still plus six, oxygen is negative two, so iron is now plus two. <clears throat> And so this would be iron two sulfate. Okay, so for oxidation reduction reactions, so we're gonna write what's known as the two half reactions. So iron went from iron zero to being plus two charged. And copper went from being on the left of the arrow, plus two charged, to zero charged. <clears throat> well, how does something go from being zero charged to plus two charged? Um, it has to get rid of electrons, <clears throat> right? So iron zero has the same number of protons and electrons. Iron two must have two fewer electrons than protons. So it has to get rid of two electrons. So you can think of electrons as a product and write it on the right side of the arrow. How does something go from being plus two charged to no charged? Well, so copper two must have two extra protons than electrons. And copper zero must have the same number of protons and electrons. So to go from plus two charged to no charged, it has to gain two electrons. <clears throat> so you can think of electrons as a reactant in this case, two electrons reacting uh, with the copper. <clears throat> okay, so this would be what's known as the two half reactions. <clears throat> And so some definitions to know. So oxidation, um, reduction. So oxidation is, is loss, All right? So a little acronym, so it's loss of electrons, so oil and reduction is gain, right? Gain of what gain of electrons or rig. So sometimes students find it easy to remember this uh, using this acronym oil rig, especially in Texas since we have a lot of oil production here. So oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So if we go back to these two half reactions, um, so Fe goes to Fe2+, plus, so it lost electrons, so oxidation will oh, I think we're going to have to stop recording for a minute. 
There we go. Okay, so Fe goes to Fe2 plus plus two electrons, so iron lost the electrons, so oxidation is lost. So this is an example of an oxidation reaction. And copper two gained electrons, so reduction is gain. So this is an example of a reduction reaction. <coughs> and then <coughs> we can two other definitions to know. <coughs> Oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So the reducing agent is the species that loses electrons so it causes the reduction of something else All right so in these two reactions which one lost electrons is iron And it causes the reduction of Cu2 plus because Cu2 plus gains those two electrons. So iron is a reducing agent. And then we have also what's called the oxidizing agent. And that will be the species that gains electrons. So that would be something that causes the oxidation of something else. <clears throat> so what gained electrons, so don't just say copper, because if you just say copper, I think you mean copper zero, solid. So what gained electrons is copper two plus. So that's what's known as the oxidizing agent. It gains electrons, it caused iron zero to lose electrons, so it caused iron two to be oxidized. <clears throat> and copper two itself then was reduced. <clears throat> okay, so this has lots of practical applications. So this is basically how batteries work. So if you set up two solutions, um, <clears throat> and so if we put, for example, an iron strip here, so a piece of iron metal. And a piece of copper metal. <clears throat> and then we attach them to a, with a wire. And maybe we put something in the middle, like a light bulb. And then in solution, maybe we have something, well, like that, um, in this case, iron. We make a solution of iron sulfate. So it will ionize in solution. So you'll have free iron two plus cations and free SO4 minus anions floating around. And then copper sulfate solution in the other beaker. <clears throat> and then what's gonna happen? So according to this chemical equation, iron is going to lose electrons. So where are those electrons going to go? They're going to go in the wire. And they're going to end up on the copper. And so that the movement of the electrons through the wire has current and that can power a light bulb, for example. So if, if an iron atom loses el electrons, then it goes into solution. So every single iron atom that loses two electrons, then the iron two plus cation would go into solution and two electrons would go through the wire to the copper. And then what's gonna happen is copper two is gonna pick up those two electrons and become a copper atom and deposit onto the surface of the copper strip. Okay, so now basically you have, uh, well, you don't quite have the electricity yet <clears throat> uh, because you always have to have charge neutrality.
All right, so every time an iron loses two electrons, an iron two goes into solution. And so the minute one single iron <clears throat> two goes into solution, you don't have charge neutrality anymore because you have more positives than negatives. And every single time copper two picks up two electrons, then now you have more sulfates than copper two cations, so you don't have charge neutrality in the other solution either. So the system can't function like this because you have to maintain charge neutrality. So to do that, then you need another piece to this. You need what's called a salt bridge. So the salt bridge would have something like potassium chloride in it. And then you have a semi-permeable membrane. So what that means is only certain things can go through the membrane. In this case, potassium and Cl can go through the membrane, but iron and copper can't, and sulfate can't. <clears throat> because you have to keep the iron and sulf iron two and copper two separated from each other. You have to keep the iron separated from the copper. <clears throat> because if iron and copper two is in the same solution, then the electron just goes directly from the iron atom to the copper two atom and it doesn't go through the wire, so you can't harness the electricity. So if you keep the two separated from each other, then you can force the electrons to go through the wire and you can harness the electricity. Okay, so every time a copper two goes into, an iron two goes into solution, then two Cl minuses have to come out of the salt bridge. So that way you maintain charge neutrality on the left. And every time a copper two comes out of solution, you lose two positives, so two potassiums have to come into solution. That way you maintain charge neutrality there. And now you've completed the circuit. So electrons are flowing through the wire, ions are flowing through the salt bridge, irons are giving away electrons, and copper twos are picking up electrons. So that's basically how all batteries work. <clears throat> okay, let's take one more example of an oxidation reduction reaction and see if you can write the half reactions. So if we take magnesium solid plus nitrogen gas to make Mg3N2. <clears throat> okay, so this is an oxidation reduction reaction. So what I would ask you to do is write the two half reactions, <clears throat> identify the oxidation reaction, the reduction reaction, the oxidizing agent, the reducing agent. So where to start? Uh, where to start is you have to assign oxidation numbers. So magnesium is zero because that's pure magnesium. Nitrogen N2, nitrogen is zero because that's pure nitrogen. And then on, on the right, nitrogen likes to be negative three charged. Magnesium is a group two metal, likes to be plus two charged. So that would give you six negatives total and six positives total, sums to zero. So that would be the oxidation numbers. So magnesium is plus two, nitrogen is plus three. <clears throat> okay, so now we write the two half reactions. So magnesium zero goes to magnesium plus two and nitrogen zero goes to nitrogen three negative. <clears throat> okay, so how does magnesium go from zero to plus two? It must give away two electrons. So write two electrons on the right. And how does two nitrogens go from being zero charged to, well, so one nitrogen goes from being zero to negative three. And we have two nitrogens here, so if we want to balance this, we need two and threes. <clears throat> so how do, you, how do you take two nitrogens, each zero, to two nitrogens, each negative three? Is you would need six electrons. So each nitrogen will pick up three electrons to become N2, N3 minuses. So basically what's happening, um, if we have two nitrogens, right, there would be triple bond between them. So they're sharing those three electrons and you need to become two N3 minuses. Well, each nitrogen, basically, if you undo the bond, has five electrons, and you need to gain three electrons here and three electrons here to become two N3 minuses. 
<clears throat> and then magnesium, of course, has two valence electrons and it wants to get rid of those two to become Mg2 plus to look like a noble gas. So to make all of this work, if you wanted to balance the chemical equation, you need three magnesiums for every one N2 to make one Mg3 Mg2 plus. <clears throat> but anyway, this is the half reactions. So now if we want to identify oxidation and reduction reaction, uh, this lost electrons. So this is the oxidation reaction. And this is the reaction where electrons are gained. So this is the reduction reaction. And then which is the oxidizing agent, so M Mg. This is the reducing agent. It lost electrons and was oxidized in the process. <clears throat> and into zero gas. is the oxidizing agent. It gained two electrons and re 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 was reduced in the process, caused the oxidation of Mg0. <clears throat> okay, so that's basically what you would have to be able to do in this material is take a, take a reaction, <clears throat> write the two half reactions, identify the oxidation reaction, the reduction reaction, and the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. <clears throat>